Um, so do you have any guidance for how to build a strong business case for invest investing in foundational user experiences? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this is something I prioritize heavily, but it does depend on the stage of the company you're at. So if you're an early stage startup, uh, you shouldn't be building super scalable experiences. You should be willing to take on tech debt and design debt to validate that your strategies work and to be able to grow fast enough to secure that next milestone, whether it's more funding or whatever. But later stage companies need to balance investment in growth versus scalability. And as a chief product officer, I think of my core responsibility is to understand this allocation of resources across things that help the product scale, things that grow products usage, things that make the product more valuable, et cetera. And that portfolio mix needs to shift dramatically over time. Uh, and what I find is almost all companies underinvest in the scaling the product piece once they've found product market fit. Features have to become valuable to your users. And you don't get to work on new things until the last feature either proves it has feature product fit, it's, it's made the product more valuable, or you delete it because it didn't get there. Engineering velocity is just the purest form of leverage a software company can have. So the faster engineers can build things, the more value we can then create for the customer, uh, the faster we can learn, the more the business can grow, et cetera. How do you balance prioritizing new features with your team versus investing in fixing foundational basics? When you think of excellence in terms of app experience, what comes to mind for you? Yeah, I tend to focus on does the app provide clear value to the user and how obvious is it to get to that value? And that could be you have this amazing intuitive experience or that you're just very directed to the user on how to get to that. Uh, value. Well, this should come as no surprise, but great app experiences are great for business. They translate into new users, into higher conversion rates, into increased retention, and as a result, into successful monetization for your business. And what we see in our internal data is that nearly three quarters of Android app users who leave a five-star review on Google Play mention the quality of their experience with the app. The most frequently mentioned aspects are speed, usability, and design. So here are five ways in which you can empower your organization to deliver app excellence. Firstly, by making app quality a company-wide priority. Then, assigning respective metrics and KPIs. Another one is about organizing teams around features or journey stages. Then, thinking about the whole user lifecycle and bringing app quality to every user interaction. And eventually, taking into account the full range of devices used by your customers. Today, we want to talk about app startup performance. Why? Because users don't like to wait for your app to launch. Clicks on the launch icon should very quickly cause a UI response. Why does app startup performance matter to you? Yeah, first of all, um, as a, a company, Lyft wants to wow our customers. So app launch time is a very important factor uh, in the user experience. That in itself means that Google Maps cares a lot about performance. And also, we have run experiments in the past where we increase performance or we uh, decrease performance. And we have seen that uh, user engagement metrics increase when the app is faster, when startup is faster. Having a good architecture in place for your app allows it to scale, improve its quality and robustness, and make it easier to test. This has a direct impact on the Android developers of the team, who will be happier and more productive, and end users who will enjoy a stable and high quality application. But you don't have to take my word for it. With me, I have great Android engineers from Duolingo and Headspace that are going to share their experience on how they refactored their app architecture and how important it was for their company. What about the, the result of the, of the refactoring for, for the end users? Can you tell us about the results and how has increased the Android quality has benefited your users, Greg? Uh, so the improvements to the app uh, in, in terms of business, it led already to a 20% increase in paid subscriber uh, between operating system, so which, which was pretty good. 
Yeah, so for us, the gains are a lot more metrics based in terms of performance. So we dropped our ANI rate by 41%, which was huge. Wow. Um, our slow frames, which we consider a key metric, so this is essentially when a frame doesn't render fast enough at you know 60 frames per second, uh, Android winds up letting it go long, which winds up dropping other frames. So this is a key metric for all of our screens, and that we reduced by 28%. And then scrolling in a lot of our scrollable screens is 40% faster. Firebase has app quality tools to take a lot of the busy work and mystery out of the picture. Firebase Crashlytics helps you track, prioritize, and fix crashes faster. What can you do to gain confidence in your app quality? You can use TestLab to validate your app on various devices, so you don't have to do this manually. App distribution will help you distribute pre-release versions of your app to trusted testers so that you can get feedback from real people on the experience you created. To understand your app's crashes, Crashlytics is there to help you analyze and fix stability issues in your app that erode app quality. And Firebase Performance Monitoring takes it a, a step further to help you find and fix additional technical performance problems in your app with quick and actionable insights. With store listing experiments, you can find this feature right in the Play Console, and it's easy to use. I recommend starting with your most important asset, that app icon. But no matter where you start, make sure you only test one element at a time. You may be tempted to play it safe, but I'd encourage you not to be shy. You'll learn the most by testing assets with distinct differences. Oh, and let your experiments run for two weeks to make sure you capture enough data. You should use the new revenue metrics in reaching devices instead of installs. These metrics can help you make decisions from a revenue perspective. For example, how much of my revenue is affected by this technical issue? What's the revenue impact of changing my min spec? What's the subscription revenue potential of this segment? We've heard that you want to explain your data safety practices to users clearly and simply. This is why we've added the data safety section to apps place where listings. Now you can share how your app collects shares, and protects user data. In late April, users will start to see the data safety section in Google Play, so make sure to submit your data safety form in console soon. Also as a reminder, you will need to have an approved form for all updates starting July 20th. You can stay up to date with all the latest news and information on the Privacy Sandbox on Android by signing up for the newsletter.